but I don't want to stand up here and talk to just you. I would like to, I would like you to share some of your stories with me. So you know what, Nancy, I know you longer. So <laughs> talk to me about issues that you've had or, or even situations. I mean, so many people say to me, and I must have this conversation at least once a week, you know, somebody will come up and say, you know, I'm in the bank and I'm not moving fast enough or I'm in the supermarket and people are, you know, yelling at me because I'm, I'm moving so slow, you know. How do I tell them, you know, give me a break, I, I have a brain tumor? Or how do I communicate with, with, you know, my children? How do I communicate with my family? You know, so let's, I mean, we have a group here. It's a bunch of women. Let's, let's you know, talk about it and problem solve because I think it's important to walk away with something practical. And I think communication is so important and yet sometimes it's so difficult. So you've got us... Uh, for a little bit, Let, let's try to come up with some, some ways that we could address some of the difficult communication in your life. I know with my oldest daughter, I had a falling out with her when she was mad at me one day and I said, if you don't like it here, go live with your father. And that was it, she hasn't talked to me since then. Well, you know, I don't know if she'll talk to me, but it's been over a year now that she's living with him instead of me, and she basically wants nothing to do with me because I said that to her. Right. Okay. So, you know, that was hurtful, and I told her, I said, I didn't mean it, I was mad. Right. You know, because you said hurtful things to me, so I said hurtful things to you, and it went back and forth. You know, but she won't let me live it down. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, I, like I say all the time, I still love her. You know, she's still my daughter, but I've come over the past the year and a half just to say, you know, it is what it is. Someday she'll come around, mm -hmm. and she'll understand that it was an argument, and things were said that maybe weren't meant, you know, but until she realizes that, you know, she, right now she wants something to do with me. Mm -hmm. so. Right, right. And that's an example how, you know, there may have been, you know, so many positive things, I'm sure, through the years you've said to your daughter. Mm -hmm. And the one negative, you know, that's, that's what she's holding on to. And so, and it happens. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer, and certainly, you know, once it's out there, we can't take that back. Right. But we can try to fix that. We can try to improve it and, and you know, so much time has, has come by. Does anybody have a suggestion for what Nancy can do in terms of communicating with her daughter? Well, um, Tracy, I, I know that this is after the fact, but I've been, you know, not necessarily in the exact same thing, but obviously I like to uh, say things without, it's like that spur of the moment. Out of my mouth and boy do I want to take those words back. And the woman, the former teacher, had given me this, the 24-hour rule. Somebody says something and you want to react. I don't care what you have to do, pretend you have masking tape, whatever it is, over your mouth, and sit 24 hours with them. Because in the light of the next day, right. it will not have that kind of power that it did in the moment it was said. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes I can't do 24 hours. Sometimes it comes an hour at a time, and I'll make a phone call to actually a friend. But I don't, you know, start to practice to not <coughs> respond immediately back. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, my son is my son is now 14, and it's so easy with those hormones raging to start to engage in insanity. Like, you know, and it will go on and on and on. And, and I'm like, so who's the crazy one here? It's me because I started to engage. Mm -hmm. So it's about me changing. And when she, in that 24 hour one, I love, because I can remember, it's simple enough for me to remember. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I can handle something much differently in 24 hours later than I do in the, in the spur. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's good advice, and I've heard that um, many times before. And it's true, I know even, um, you know, sometimes people will come to me and they'll be upset, and sometimes I'll say, Think about this a week from now. Like, is this going to be something signif significant? And it's the same type of concept. But in terms of, I think, now and, and what do we do, if we're looking to repair that relationship or repair that communication, you know, how can we do that? You know, and, and my first instinct would be, which probably on the phone would be a little bit difficult, in person, are you seeing your daughter? No. 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 She won't meet with you even if you if you asked her for a time. Uh, I get the an argument. I get the run around. You know. Because there is like it's almost like an event 
it can't point out any part, uh, it does nothing to do with her. It has to do with like taking a look at what your expectation was, what you own in it, and it's not about pointing the finger at her saying, well, hey, you did this, I did that, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. It's really to own what your part of it was and go and consider making an amends to her. Right. And whether or not she'll see you, you could possibly do it by letter mm -hmm. um, if she will not see you. And you could just say, or even to write her and say, I just appreciate a little, uh, you know, some of your time and to meet in a, in a um, uh, neutral territory. If it's a restaurant where you can't both get up and storm out and act crazy in the restaurant, I have found to be really beneficial, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, okay? Right.